political bulls. So factoring is just a financing method for a company to gain capital to use on their projects. So it's just like issuing stocks to investors or taking out a loan from a bank. Except this process of factoring involves selling receivables to obtain capital instead. Right. And receivables, as you know, is called accounts receivable and it lives on the balance sheet as a current asset. It's mostly made up of credit sales, which is a portion of revenue that customers pay at a future date. And uh, when we factor and sell these receivables, we can do it with a recourse liability or without the recourse liability. And there's only one difference between the two. It's really easy is that if our customers don't pay the amount that they owe us for the sales, then under the recourse liability, we are liable to pay the company or the banks that we're selling these receivables to for the amount that the customers don't pay. Without the recourse liability, we don't have to pay them regardless. All right, let's go ahead and work through an example. Sun Inc. factors 3 million of its accounts receivable without recourse for a finance charge of 5%. The finance company retains an amount equal to 10% of the accounts receivable for possible adjustments. Sun estimates the fair value of the recourse liability at 115,000. All right, so we have some information over here. Um, this finance charge of 5% on the finance company side is just going to be interest revenue. That's what it's going to be recorded as because it, it's just a fee. It, it has nothing to do with the sale. It's just a fee on top of the sale. And, and then it says that the finance company retains an amount equal to 10% of the accounts receivable for possible adjustments. These adjustments include... Um, uh like sales discounts or sales returns and allowances anything that could decrease accounts receivable even more and the finance company is going to retain that amount in case of the adjustments but they'll give it back to us when this transaction is over think of it like a security deposit it's going to be given back to us and that is that receivable that's due from the factor on sun inc's books but on the finance company's books it's going to be a due to customer for that same amount all right, so let's go ahead and fill in the journal entries for Sun Inc. Um, yeah, we have accounts receivable, and then we have cash. We're going to get cash for this for this sale. All right, so let's go ahead and credit accounts receivable for three million because we're getting rid of it. And then this receivable that's due from Factor is that ten percent of that three million. That security to deposit that we're going to get back is three hundred thousand. And then the loss on sale of receivable is going to be that finance charge of 5%. That interest revenue on the finance company side is 150000 That's 5% of $3 million. For us, it's a loss. And we're going to debit that. And then cash is our plug. So that's going to be the last thing that we solve for. And to solve for cash, I wrote down the formula over here. We know that our debits have to equal the credits. And so the left side has to equal the right side. So we add up all our debits, cash plus loss on sale plus receivable that's due from factor has to equal our credits, which in this case is just accounts receivable. And then you can rearrange and find cash and you'll arrive at this value, 2,550,000. All right, let's go ahead and book the journal entries for the finance company. This just so you guys like how this works on both sides. So it's going to be the exact same, except whatever we debit is just going to be credited on this side. So we have accounts receivable. Over here, we credit it. Over here, we're going to debit because we're gaining accounts receivable. And then this interest revenue. Remember, revenue has a credit normal. So every time we increase its value, we have to credit it. So over here, we debited the loss for 150000 Here, we're going to credit it because it's that 5% finance charge. And then this due to customer is our receivable. Over here, it's a debit. Here, it's going to be a credit. And then cash, once again, is going to be the same value, this 2550000 You can go ahead and solve for it the same way as well if you're only doing this. But since we already did it on this side, I just went ahead and typed it in. All right. Um, I want to show you guys this example with the recourse liability just, just to, you know, get everything in. All right. So with the recourse liability... Uh, it's really simple. We want to do two things. We just have to add this recourse liability account. And then what's going to happen is we're going to credit it because it's a liability. We're going to credit it for 115000 the amount that was stated in the question. And then our loss, our loss on sale of receivable is also going to go up by 115000 So 
is just going to be this 150,000 plus 115,000, which is 265,000. But our cash stays the same. So there's no need to go ahead and rework this formula because our cash is going to be the same because we have a credit for 115,000, but we also have a debit for 115,000. So it all cancels out and cash is going to be the same. The journal entries for the finance company is going to be the same as well because n um, there's nothing that really changes. They don't owe us anything more and they don't make any extra interest. So everything's going to be the same. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.